I'm going to teach you the CMS check, which is circulation, motion, and sensation check. So anytime anybody has an immobilizer device on, such as an ACE wrap, a splint, a cast, their interaction, they've injured an area, you're going to um, do a CMS check on them. You're going to check their circulation, motion, and sensation. And I'm using Todd here as my mannequin. And he has hurt his right elbow. He fell. He was skateboarding on state property, and he fell. <laughs> so he's complaining of pain. He's swelling. I'm going to put an ACE wrap on the appropriate width. This is, I think, about two inches wide, which is appropriate for his arm, anybody's arm. And what I'm going to do is start. It is a joint I'm talking about, so I'm going to start on the long bone below the joint. I'm going to go across the injured area and finish on the long bone above the joint. So I am wrapping toward the heart. All right. These have Velcro on them, so we're going to keep the Velcro off the skin. I'm going to use one circular anchor wrap, and then I'm going to start working my way up, overlapping by about half. So I'm going across, and it would really be helpful if he could sit down and lay it on a table. I mean, if he's injured, it's really going to be hurting right now, or if I had an assistant to help hold. Okay. So we're overlapping by about a half. We're going across the injured joint, trying not to move his arm because it does hurt. And we're going to end with the Velcro right there. Or if you have the little plastic or metal pins, you could put them on right there. So now I've done my wrap. And I've done it snug, but I haven't done it so tight that I'm going to cut off his circulation. And I might ask him, how does it feel, Todd? Uh, firm. firm. Firm? Okay. So now I'm going to do his CMS check. And this is something you would do every shift. So if he wears an ACE wrap or has a cast, a splint, something to that effect, we would be doing his CMS check at a minimum of once a shift. If it was a fresh injury, we'd do it more often. And we're always going to check the area distal to the wrap. And what we're going to do first is check for edema or swelling anywhere around the edges of the wrap, and there is none. Then we're going to check for the temperature of the area distal to the wrap, and it feels a little warm. So I'm a little concerned. So I'm going to feel the opposite side, the opposite extremity, and that feels warm too. So they're comparable. So that would be normal for him. Then I'm going to ask him, Todd, do you have any numbness or tingling no. in your fingers or hand? No. No. Good. Are you able to move your fingers? Yes. All right. So I know the nerves are working fine. The circulation so far is good. Um, what kind of pain are you having right now, Todd, from a, a 1 to a 10? You said you were in pain. Oh, it's about an 8. Okay. So 8. He's in a lot of pain. Is that in your elbow or somewhere else? Elbow, just the whole area. Okay, just the whole area. Okay, let me cheat really quick here. <laughs> you guys can't cheat, okay? So we talked about the edema. We've talked, have we talked about the color? No, we talked about the color. So that's a nice kind of pink color. I'm going to check over here. No. So if it was blue, if it was mottled, so that red and white type of patches are very severely red, that would be a concern. Now I'm going to check, one of the most important things you can do is check for a distal pulse. So distal to this area would be the radial pulse. So I'm going to put my finger right there and check for a pulse. Uh oh. oh. <laughs> he has a pulse! <laughs> and it's strong and it's bounding. It's not weak and thready. If it was weak and thready, I would check his other side to see if that was weak and thready also. And then I am going to check for capillary refill. So I'm going to pinch the nail bed, and he has a brusque capillary refill, which means it refills within two to three seconds. So now I'm ready to go ahead and chart on that, and I'll give you a handout on how to chart for a CMS Now next check. we're going to talk about crutch walking. That's another skill that you need to do in the skills lab. And this is an educational tool. You're going to demonstrate to your patient how to do it, as well as teach them. And then they will be going home with crutches or using crutches within the facility. I want to talk to you about safety features of the crutch first. And you're going to be, anybody want to volunteer to be the patient? Thank you, Jill. You can be on film too. 
Okay, so Joe, what did you hurt? My leg. <laughs> My knee. <laughs> okay, the doctor wants me to teach you how to um, walk on crutches. So the doctor <laughs> wants me to teach Joe how to use crutches because he had a knee operation and he's going home and he's not able to bear weight on his knee for the first couple weeks and as it heals he'll be able to slowly bear weight and he needs to get around with crutches. So I'm going to teach him the safety features of the crutches first. So before you use these each time you'll want to inspect them. You'll want to inspect, inspect all the rubbers to make sure there's no holes in them. You want to make sure you examine the tips here. This is a vacuum type section cups at the end so they shouldn't be cracked. Don't see that. And these are all in good shape. No cracks, no holes, no nothing. All right, then you are going to make sure your shoes are flat, have good tread on the bottom. They're not slippery, you're not wearing heels of any sort, anything that would slip and you could fall, all right? And the surfaces you should go on, you want to avoid icy or wet surfaces, really gravelly, rocky, sandy surfaces where you could slip and fall, okay? So I'm gonna do, there we go. So to adjust these, I'm going to adjust them to my shell self and I'm going to go ahead and demo how to use them. All right. And then I'll get you a pair to fit you and I'll adjust them for you and you can practice with them and I'll see how you do. All right. So these are adjustable by these little pins down here. These, um, there is some measurements here. So however tall, I'm about five, six. So I'm going to go ahead and push both pins in at the same time and push the bottom here and go up to the 5-6. You want to make sure you do both of them together so they are of equal height. Double check them like this when you're, try not to let your friends play with them because you'll have to adjust them and readjust them and anyway they're not toys so make sure they're the same height and they are and when you put them underneath here and check for height, you will be at the maximum two to three finger widths below your armpit, okay? okay. So these are actually are a good height for me. And when you adjust the hand grip here, your arm should have a slight bend. When we studied this in psych tech school, it said about a 30 degree bend right here in the arm. So this has got a little bend. It might be better actually to come up about one for me. All right, because if you um, put too much pressure on your elbow, you could hurt, damage your elbow. And also, you don't want to lean on these crutches too much. All right, you can get a paralysis actually in your arms called crutch palsy if you lean on them. So what you're supposed to do is put your weight on your good leg, which is your right leg, and the palms of your hands. That's where the weight goes. All right, the doctor doesn't want you putting weight on your left leg because of your knee surgery. The crutches are held out about six inches from the sides of your feet. When you're standing, just try to stand up straight. All right, so you don't get the crutch palsy or damage to your elbows. And you can um, put some sheepskin on this if you want for extra padding if they start wearing on your armpits. So I'm gonna teach you how to walk on a flat surface. All right, and I'm going to start with the beginner gate. It's called the three-point gate. So what you do is you move your two crutches with your bad leg as a unit. So you move them forward, and just what's comfortable, so you're in an upright position, about eight inches or so, not too far forward. You don't want to do a face plant. Okay, Jill? So up six, eight inches or so. Put the weight on the palms of your hands and move your good leg up to meet it. Just beginner gates. So bad leg up with your crutch, good leg up to meet it. The weight is on what, Joe? Your uh, good foot leg. Good foot and the palm, palms of your hands. Oh. Yeah, good. All right. And then as soon as I get crutches for you, I'll have you show me that you're doing that just fine. Okay? All right, once you're very experienced at that, you can start moving a little quicker on something called the swing through gate, the swing through gate, just like a swing, when you swing somebody in a swing set. 
So what you do there is actually you put your crutches forward. You can put them forward a little bit farther than you did with the three-point gait. And you swing both legs at the same time through and to the other side. Do not put weight on your left leg because of your knee, Joe. See how that works? Yeah? Okay. All right. So I'm going to teach you how to go up and down stairs. And before I go outside to the stairs, I'm going to just tell you a little bit how we do it. And we will, for safety, you've got three stairs going into your house. And you've got handrails on both sides. So anytime you've got handrails, you must use them. Because Wait, it's much, us. yes, 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 it's much safer. Because they are secure. You know, they're secured into the concrete. And so how to hold your crutches. If you've got big hands, you can hold them like this in one hand and use the handrail. Or you can flip it around like this if you've got smaller hands like me and carry them up this way because you'll need them once you get to the top of the stairs. You'll need both crutches, so you can't leave one behind. All right, your left leg is bad, so I'm actually showing you the wrong way. So your left leg's bad. We're going to put the crutches on the bad side, and you're going to always put the handrail on your good side. Okay, so hold on with your good side to the handrail. Have your crutches on your bad side. All right, going down is the same thing. Handrails on your good side, crutches on your bad. So you'll flip over and use the opposite yeah. handrail. All right, if there's only, if you're going to um, some event or going shopping and there's only one handrail, use it no matter what side it's on, okay? Because yeah. it's still safer. When you go up, think the good goes up. I hate to be religious, but the good goes to heaven and the bad goes the other way. So if you think that way, you're going to remember this. So his good leg is the right leg. So he's going to put his right leg up the stair first. And then he's going to bring the bad leg and the crutches as a unit up to meet it. Never skip stairs. When he goes down, his bad leg, which is the left leg, is going to go down the first stair first with the crutch. And then his good leg is going to go down to meet it. So one at a time. So good goes up, bad goes down. Okay, so let's go outside and I'll show you how to use them. Yeah. Okay, to teach you how to walk upstairs, your left leg, your left knee is bad. The doctor doesn't want you to put weight on that leg. So your, your weight will go on your right leg as well as your palms of your hand on your crutch yeah. and your handrail. So moving to the stairs here. Remember, I'm going to put my strong side to the rail. So... My weak side is the left side. My right side will be on the handrail. I'm going to put both crutches on the weak side. And I'm going to put my strong leg up first. Follow with the weak leg and the crutch. Okay? I'm just going to go up a couple stairs to show you how it's done. So, strong side up first. Weak side up to match. Strong leg up. Weak side with the crutch as a unit. Piece of cake, right? Yep. Okay, going downstairs, I'm just going to put my foot down here so I don't fall. <laughs> You're going to go to the opposite side because your strong leg still needs to be on the handrail. The weak side here supported by the crutches. All right, so we talked about the bad going down first. So the bad leg and the crutches go together with the strong leg coming to meet it. Try to get your foot out like this so your weight is right down your center. Because if you put your leg back here and do this, your center is at your head and you could fall right on your face. It would be best if, not to fall at all, but if you're going to fall, it would be best to fall back on your butt. So kick your leg out with your crutch. Okay? Come on down. Make sure you have a very clean surface to work on in the stairs and you don't have a lot of... Uh, Debris, there. Okay, you understand? I'll get you a set of crutches and you can show me how well you can do and how much you learned. All right, thanks.